Okay, the affidavit has been released. The affidavit that we have been waiting for that they were releasing when accused murderer Brian Koberger arrived back in Moscow, Idaho to face the charges of the murders of the four college students. They have released this affidavit and there is some interesting information in this affidavit. The first thing I want to talk about in this affidavit is about the surviving roommates, one in particular. Let's go ahead and read. I'm not going to read this whole affidavit. It is several pages. I am going to read this part about the surviving roommates. Let's start. As part of this investigation, numerous interviews were conducted by Moscow police, Idaho State Police, and FBI. Two of the interviews included BF and DM. Both BF and DM were inside the King Road residence at the time of the homicides and were roommates to the victims. BF's bedroom was located on the east side of the first floor of the King Road residence. Based on numerous interviews conducted by MPD officers, ISP detectives, and FBI agents, as well as my review of evidence, I have learned the following. <clears throat> on the evening of November 12th, Chapin and Kernadal are seen by BF at the Sigma Chi house on the University of Idaho campus from approximately 9 p.m. on November 12th to 1.45 a.m. on November 13th. BF also estimates estimated that at approximately 1.45 a.m. Chapin and Kernadal returned to the King Road residence. BF also stated that Chapin did not live in the King Road residence but was a guest of Kernadal. DM and BF both made statements during interviews that indicated the occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. and asleep or at least in their rooms by approximately 4 a.m. This is with the exception of Kernadal, who received a DoorDash order at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. DM stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. So now we're learning that DM's bedroom was on the second floor, not on the first floor. DM's bedroom was on the second floor of the house. DM stated she was awoken at approximately 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Goncalves playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which were located on the third floor. A short time later, DM said she heard what who she thought was Goncalves say something to the effect of, there's someone here. A review of records obtained from a forensic download of Kernadal's phone showed this could have could also have been Kernadal as her cellular phone indicated she was likely awake and using the TikTok app at approximately 4.12 a.m. DM stated she looked out her bedroom but did not see anything. When she heard the comment about someone being in the house, DM stated she opened her door a second time. When she heard what she thought was crying coming from Kernadal's room, DM then said she heard a male voice say something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. So this is all at 4 a.m. Let's continue. At approximately 4.17 a.m., a security camera located at 1112 King Road, a residence immediately to the northwest of the 1122 King Road, picked up distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. A dog can also be heard barking numerous times, starting at 4.17 a.m. The security camera is less than 50 feet from the west wall of Kernadal's bedroom. DM stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth. So we're learning that DM saw this person, the intruder, the possible murderer. DM stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking toward her. DM described the figure as five foot 10 or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows. The male walked past, walked past DM 
as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked toward the back sliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room after seeing the male. DM did not state that she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. The combination of DM's statements to law enforcement, reviews of forensic downloads of records from BF and DM's phone, and video of a suspect as described below leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. And now we're hearing that DM was awake during that time and heard things and seen the person in the house, the intruder, the murderer in the house. And reports from early on in this investigation state that a police call wasn't made until nearly noon that day. That means from 4 a.m. until noon, DM didn't think it was appropriate to call the police, even though she saw this intruder, heard crying, heard a male's voice, saw someone she didn't recognize with a mask on. So there are a lot of questions about this what is going on with this with dm what is going on with this this is this is breaking information and very concerning also if you read this whole uh, affidavit i'm not going to read the whole thing but it looks like they matched um Koberger's dna to dna that was found on the sheath of a knife that was left at the scene by one of the victims. The sheath has imprinted on it K-Bar and some other military insignias, and it looks like his DNA was on that sheath. So it looks like that sheath may be the thing that connects him to this crime. They also collected trash from his parents' house in Pennsylvania and matched DNA with his father. Um, so it looks like he made a huge mistake by leaving this sheath there and that's going to be his downfall. He thought that he could do the perfect crime allegedly, but it doesn't look like that's the case. What do you think about DM? What do you think about the cops not being called for several hours? Now we've learned all these things about DM, what she saw and heard that night and that she was awake when this was happening. Please leave your comments down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.